Welcome to Unconfuse Me. I'm Bill Gates. We got to get science caught up. And that's why our other focus, of course, is brain health. Yeah. And teaching people, everyone, teenagers, college students, adults, that you can care for your brain and perhaps delay, maybe prevent altogether, but delay until perhaps, as you say, 10 years from now, when there is a drug. And what we've found as we've gone down this brain health journey is that the average person, A, does not even know you can conceptually do things to take care of your brain. And if they are aware of that, they have no idea what those things are, basically. Maybe crossword puzzles is the things they'll say. Which is and, not true. Which is not even <laughs> helpful. So, so it's like, I think that to us is something that has also been very inspiring. And especially with young people, they love nothing more than to hear where previous generations have failed them and to to see them perk up when 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 they hear like, oh, there's a whole, you're the, maybe the most important part of your body you were never told how to take care of they completely neglected that conceptually it really engages people and they really like it and there's studies that show like you know right now up to 40 percent of cases i think of alzheimer's are preventable through brain healthy habits i mean it's not 100 percent, but that's a lot that's almost half you know and so it, it's like i would you know everyone should take that so i think that's something that's been really a great focus for us and something that especially as people who kind of have a like line to a younger generation from a communication standpoint, like they've been very engaged with and people really, yeah, they like to know that they can do things to take care of their brain. Just like if you don't smoke, you won't get lung cancer probably. If you don't eat French fries all day every day, you won't die of a heart attack probably. There are things you can do to really help your chances of not getting uh, Alzheimer's. And one of the strongest things to emerge in that area is the importance of good sleep. Yeah. yeah. So I've gone from in my 30s and 40s when there'd be a conversation about sleep, and sadly for me, that's a long time ago. Uh, <laughs> it would be like, oh, I only sleep six hours. Oh, yeah. and the other guys, right. no, I only sleep five. Well, sometimes <laughs> I don't sleep at all and be yeah. like, wow, those guys are so good. Jeez, yeah. I, have to, I have to try right. harder because sleep is laziness yeah. and right. you know, sleep, unnecessary. I'll sleep when I'm dead. Sleep when I'm dead. And, yeah. You know, yeah. now what we know is that to maintain brain health, getting good sleep, even you know, back to your teen years is super important. It's one of the most predictive factors of any dementia, including Alzheimer's, is whether you're getting good sleep. So I've swung all the way to, you know, looking at my daily sleep scores. Oh, yeah, and, we uh, all uh, com com <laughs> You know, competing. Uh, okay, who's who got a 90? How the yeah. heck did you do that? Generally, uh, I do better than him. Yeah, okay, I, I I'm, I'm not, I, I, I lose I take out. The dog out. When I was young, the convention was you'll sleep when you're dead. Sleep isn't that important. You don't need sleep. And now already we know that that's uh, completely oppositional to the truth. And if anything, it's maybe the single most important thing you can do to keep your brain healthy. And, you know, it's like they used to think smoking was healthy. It's very, it is similar, you know, and that's, and that's where we are, like culturally is like the things people think and understand about their own brains are like where they were in like the 50s and 60s, you know. Um, it's just like so far off from what actual science is reflective of. And it's nice to to be able to communicate that to people. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, we we have these conversations that sleep is actually the funniest one, honestly, because so many people, ah, how can I improve? I can't improve my sleep. There's nothing to be done. And it's like, that is so not true. Yeah. You can do so many things. You ask things them and, three questions and you're yeah. like, oh, yeah, okay. And that's been a fun thing to change my own sleep. And now, and because I do track and I look every day, I know that I sleep really well. And that's really important. She so, sleeps yeah. with 400 contraptions <laughs> she does sleep really well though <laughs> but it's like a team of people of <laughs> it's like a shuttle launch every night so you know hfc we have our our five brain healthy habits which of course sleep exercise nutrition mental fitness and then emotional well-being so mm, um and those are things that seem obvious but they're not things that people incorporate into their daily lives. Yeah. And, you know, and and I I wasn't doing that. Now I do. And I feel better and my health is better. And I feel optimistic about that information when I'm given it. And I find that people like it. So anyway, so we created this coursework for high school students and college students to learn about this stuff because 
it seemed to us like they wanted to know. And what is it literally, was it 100% of them yeah. said that they were more interested and would be taking steps to live a brain healthy lifestyle. And what was it, 80 something percent of them said they were interested in studying neurology, which would be another thing which would of course help this. People. Yeah, and I think, I mean, what we found from the neurologists and doctors we know is that a lot of people in the medical field don't understand that there are things you can do to keep your brain healthy. And that is, that like, that's how far off, that's, that's how big the disconnect is, which was, um, alarming, you know, in some ways. What's funny is the one uh, scientific study that we did that we actually had published is that I taught this coursework uh, of, of brain health. And we nice. also had a neurologist teach the coursework. And we and we scientifically proved that uh, people retain information better from celebrities than than doctors. Wow. <laughs> Which uh, is, is, it's a heavy burden. So just know that. Right. Uh, <laughs> but it is true. Uh, yeah, it, it, it was published. Yeah. And we're, we're in the next couple of weeks shooting five more courses with oh, really? five more celebrities. With five more celebrities, because young people because only want to hear from them. Yeah. They want to hear from them. So, so yeah, we're doing that soon. And, and, and then hopefully, you know, we'll, We'll get it out there because it is, again, when we talk about like the main issue in my mind is people not sharing their stories and it's because they're scared. We give them some hope and they become less scared. They share the stories and that leads to energy that leads to movement. Yeah. Subscribe to Unconfused Me wherever you listen to podcasts.